Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Glaze's Geezer Raj. We want to thank you guys for watching the videos. We really uh, appreciate that. But just remember, like, subscribe, and share. It really helps us out. Uh, my grandson, who's editing all these videos, 14 years old, he's really good at it. Uh, if we can get uh, a few more subscribers, make a little bit of money, help him out. I really want to help him out. Um, also, this week, we're going to cover sandblasting. As you can see behind me, I sandblast it. We're gonna, but I'm going to show you how I went about doing that, build the enclosure. If you also see a stock frame, a used one here, I want to thank Midyear Mitch for uh, making this available to me uh, for a short period so I can make sure everything lines up. We um, also had to tweak the hinge pillars a little bit to make them fit right, so I'll show you how I did that. But uh, yeah, I was able to go out to Corvette, or not Corvettes of Carlisle, I'm sorry, that's later in the year. Uh, went out to just Spring Carlisle, and on the way out, I was able to help Mitch move a roaster shop chassis back to his place, and then also load this up and uh, bring it back to my home. Hey guys, I'm out here this, this morning. I uh, got my sandblaster hooked up. Got my fresh air helmet here. Got my fresh air pump outside. So uh, let me take you inside here. I started, I've used about a half a pod up so far. I need to adjust the uh, sand flow, but with this old sandblast pod, it's not that easy to do. So try not to waste too much sand, but still I don't want to run my compressor to death. So let's go inside and see what we got. I showed you guys this before. I've done this before. I actually used my lift to kind of hold up this two by four frame. Actually it's two by four and one by. And then you just uh, bring heavy duty visqueen or plastic over it, tape it to the floor. I just blasted about a half pod. You can see there's no dust in the shop. Uh, and what I do is I poke a little hole in here and put my shop vac right down here. And all that's to do is pull a little bit of vacuum. And of course it's filtered in the shop back, so it makes a nice uh, exhaust. It doesn't keep up, but we're not a production facility here. So you can see in there's the split window coupe. So let's go in and see what we got. A little tough getting in here because I made this tight. Come in here, you can see there's glass media already on the floor. Now what I normally do is uh, at some point, clean my shop vac, <clears throat> and then come in here and vacuum all this up and recycle this. So, you can see, there's a lot up on top. But yeah, we're, we're you can see here, I sandblasted the top here. Here's where I put my patch in. But yeah, uh, didn't get as much done as I'd like to. Basically, got the bottom of this done, not inside. I want to get in here and get the surface rust so I, we can treat that properly. And then, of course, get back here on the uh, lock pillar, too. I'm not going to hit that up there too much just because I'm going to remove most of that. But I'll try to hit some of it. So, anyway, that's an update of where I'm at. Let's keep moving along. Okay, folks, let's get in here and see where we're at. It's kind of hard when you're sandblasting to see all the details, so you got to let the dust settle. But it looks like we got most of what I was trying to you see that hinge pillar cleaned up real nice. Got most of the rust out of there. Coming up the uh, coop board cage. Got the right there. But yeah, it's moving along pretty good. I'm gonna go grab two more bags of blast media and then uh, finish this up tomorrow. So maybe even this afternoon. We're out here today. I'm going to try to give you a little bit of a view of me sandblasting. It's very difficult because I have this plastic enclosure, pretty heavy uh, plastic. I'm not sure which mill it is, but it's pretty thick. Uh, so I'm going to do a little elapsed time here just to show you guys what it's like inside there and why you should have a, a fresh air helmet when you're doing anything like this. All 
All right, guys. Well, I got the same blasting done. And there might be some touch up here and there, but uh, that's okay. I can do that by hand. Maybe just sand, sand it or grind it off. But uh, yeah, cleaned up nice. Once, uh, once I vacuum all this dust out of here with my wet and dry vac, uh, come back about an hour later, I'll show you guys the results. So till then, I got to mow my grass. Okay, let's take a, a look you see here on the sandblast job. Now that all the dust has settled, so to speak. Uh, yeah, let's get in there and see it. Okay, so I'm cleaned up from all the sandblasting. I don't know if any of you guys ever sandblasted on your own, but it is messy. Clean my vacuum filter about 10 times, maybe 15. Still got a lot of bit of cleaning up to do in the back there. A little dusty, but um, got it. I'm pretty satisfied with the sandblasting. Could have got a couple of spots a little better, but I'm really happy with this. As you can see, it cleaned up nicely. My transition pieces, I'll go ahead and weld those up now. Once I get the stock chassis in there and make sure everything fits up. Pretty excited about that. So next move is going to be drill some holes here for my spot welds on the inside and outside of that flange. I didn't do that yet. Um, I'm gonna replace, actually I don't think I'm gonna replace this at this moment. I think I'm gonna get those rockers in there, get the chassis which is sitting way over here on the outside of the plastic under there, weld that all up, get the bottom secure, and then take this last outside lower windshield frame out, put the new one in, and put the inner one in. So yeah, pretty excited, and then I'll start on the back here. Just don't wanna tear a lot of things apart at the same time. I just think that you start messing with the integrity. If you don't have a complete jig, like Midyear Mitch has, I do have a jig here, but nothing like his, so. I like to do one section at a time to keep the integrity of the birdcage there. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Things are looking good. Okay, I'm out here today. I got all the sandblast enclosure rolled up. I'm going to support the back of the vehicle on the lift. And then I'm gonna roll this body dolly out and I'm gonna roll this frame in to check out all my patches and repairs on the bird cage, and make sure they're all lined up such as that. Yeah, let's get going. up under there a little bit more work than I wanted to do but it looks like I have possibly one of these hinge pillars I think this one which is the driver's side or the left I think it is a little cockeyed because I got a little gap right there uh, and I checked them with I leveled the chassis and once I leveled the chassis or got it level, yeah, it's uh, not quite right. So I'm gonna tweak it tomorrow. I'll film some of that, but anyway, yep, let's go. Okay, Geezer Garage fans, I'm out here this morning, beautiful day out here in Northeast Ohio, but what I have going on is, if you look real close, this pillar, is perfectly plumb. If you look over here, this pillar is not plumb. So basically what I want to do is have these pillars match. And the reason I do is if you look right down here, you see a gap right here. And it's also pushing this outside brace that I added out, as you can see right there. 
So after looking at this, I believe what I want to do is see my strap here. I want to tweak that over, make the plumbness of both these hinge pillars the same, and that should straighten everything out to fit perfectly because the frame, according to Mid-Ear Mitch, is correct. So yeah, here we go. All right, everybody, I want to show you what happened here. So if you look real close, you see where that bubble's at. So the tip of the bubble's right at that line. If I go to the other side, this one is the same on this side. That is what I was going for. And now when you look, this fits perfectly. And then I can bend this one back in that was bent out when I put it together because it was only tack welded. See there, there's a gap in there. So yeah, I'm real happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and, sorry for the noise, the compressor kicked on, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick the windshield in there to make sure I didn't tweak the windshield opening too much or anything. Okay, I've uh, actually stuck the windshield in there, shimmed it up a little bit with some rubber pads. That's not the exact location, but I want, what I wanted to really see is when I put it in there, is the gap even on both sides the same? I want to make sure I didn't tweak the windshield opening when I moved this B pillar, or I should say this hinge pillar over this way a little bit. So yeah, the gaps look good. Happy with that. Uh, so let's keep moving along. So appreciate it. Remember, like, subscribe, and share. We really appreciate you guys. Thanks a lot.